Hello, my name is Caroline. Thanks for joining me for this video on my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be all about motion sensors with the Raspberry Pi. I'm making this video because I had a request on my channel today and I thought this was a great idea. The request was about attaching a motion sensor to a Raspberry Pi and I looked at different projects and I thought, hey, why don't we integrate the motion sensor with Raspberry Pi with Smart Home? And I featured a bunch of different smart plugs, smart bulbs, smart switches on my channel and what if we could uh, take a motion sensor and integrate it with our smart home. And let me do a quick demo for you. Uh, I have my Raspberry Pi Zero W here attached to my motion sensor and I'm going to simulate some motion here. And my light turned on and to turn off my light I will create more motion and the light should go off. And there it is. And that's a quick demo of the tutorial for today's video. Let's get started. Now let's talk about the materials you'll need for this project. Number one, you'll need a smart plug. And here is a smart plug from TP-Link I featured on my channel previously. And I've also featured smart plugs from Tekken. So you will need at least one smart plug already configured on the internet ready to go. Now, if you haven't done that already, I'll link to some of my other videos where I do set up these smart plugs. The other material you'll need is you'll need your Raspberry Pi. Now for the demo, I used a Raspberry Pi Zero W, uh, but for the tutorial itself, I am going to use my Raspberry Pi 3, and of course you could use the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, I would recommend doing this on a Raspberry Pi zero w because it really is a very small script and it really doesn't take up a lot of processing power you don't need the memory and the power you you would get with a raspberry pi 4 for example um, the other thing you'll need is you'll need a pir motion sensor and i will link to below how you can purchase this pir motion sensor it says it works with Arduino. Uh, so I wasn't really sure if it was going to work with Raspberry Pi, but it did. It's got uh, three prongs on the end. One is VCC, one is ground, and one is out. So that is really key if you're going to buy a motion sensor. It should work with your Raspberry Pi, uh, but I do need three main connections, VCC, ground, and out. And I will show you how to wire that up later on in this tutorial. Uh, the limitation with doing this with a Raspberry Pi Zero W is that there are connection pins that you'll need to either uh, solder on or you'll need to purchase a Raspberry Pi Zero W uh, with uh, headers. Uh, what is a header and why would you need one? Um, so with the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4, the headers are already attached. So I highly recommend using a Raspberry Pi 3 for this project if you're not into uh, soldering or if you don't have a Raspberry Pi Zero with the headers on it. I personally, before I started this video, I did uh, solder on header pins onto my Raspberry Pi Zero W. Uh, you, you'll need something like this and then um, I'll link over to another video where that YouTuber soldered on the header pins onto a Raspberry Pi Zero. You will also need at least three male to female jumper cables and this is to connect your PIR motion sensor to your Raspberry Pi. For your Raspberry Pi, you'll need a monitor, you'll need a keyboard and a mouse. Uh, just like with every other program, you'll need your micro SD card. I'm going to assume you you know how to, or you have a Raspbian system set up on your Raspberry Pi. If you don't, I'll link over to a video where I flashed a micro SD card from scratch and installed the Raspbian operating system. I am using the latest Raspbian operating system as of the recording of this video, which is a Raspbian Buster system. And that is what you need to get started with this project. Now, let's get into the hardware assembly now. Um, I'm going to assume, as I said before, that you've got the Raspbian operating system on your Raspberry Pi. So there is my micro SD card inserted. I'm going to use a mouse and a keyboard. This is the dongle for it. And now let's wire up our PIR motion sensor. And let's see, let's start with, and I have a diagram. Uh, that I'm showing. They'll show you how to do this step by step, but uh, let's start with, you do need to pay attention. I think the PR motion sensors, some of them are a little bit different. So you want to look at what the pins are actually labeled on your 
PIR motion sensor. And this is a male to female jumper cable. So I'll put the female end on ground and then I will connect this to pin number six on my Raspberry Pi. And the next is out. Now this goes to GPIO 17, which is pin number 11 on the GPIO. I'm gonna count down one, two, three, four, five, six and I'm gonna connect it to pin number 11, which is GPIO number 17, according to the GPIO map. And then last but not least, we need power, that's VCC, and they do recommend five volts of power, which is pin number two. And I will uh, put that together, excellent. Now, um, the next step is we do need our HDMI monitor, so I'll hook that up to my HDMI monitor here. And then of course, last but not least, we do need to power up our Pi. And now let me add power to my Raspberry Pi. And it should boot right up into the Raspbian operating system. Excellent, we're now doing a screen recording on my Raspberry Pi. And this is the desktop. This is a fresh install of the Raspbian Buster operating system. I'm on my home Wi-Fi and I'm opening up the Chromium browser right now. And I'm going to github.com forward slash Caroline Don. And I've put most of the instructions in this tutorial on my GitHub page. And I will link to that below so you can see everything and let's go to repositories and I'm going to, and the name of this repository is Smart Home Motion Sensor RPI. And we're gonna go through the tutorial. So I, if you've missed the materials I just went over, you can see them right here with links. Uh, assumptions, I'm going to assume you know how um, to install Raspbian operating system. You have a Raspberry Pi with a fresh Raspbian operating system. Um, you're gonna understand how the GPIO works. You, you, knew, you know how to boot up your Raspberry Pi and you have your smart plug already configured and on the system. All right, so step one, we've done step one, which is set up the Raspbian operating system. Step two, we've done step two now, which is the hardware assembly. And here's the diagram that I showed you earlier when I, I wired up my PR motion sensor to my Raspberry Pi, excellent. Now let's go into IFTTT. Now IFTTT I have featured on my channel previously. It is a free service that we'll use to help connect our Raspberry Pi through a webhook to our smart home devices. I'm going to ifttt.com right now. If you don't already have an account, you'll create an account. It is free to create an account and it does not require a credit card. So since I already have an account, I'm just gonna sign in. Great, I am now logged in to my IFTTT account. IFTTT stands for if this then that. I'm going to hit explore in the top right hand corner and I'm gonna click this plus button next to make your own applets from scratch. And we're gonna make our own applet. Uh, as I said, IFTTT stands for if this then that. So let's define our this. What is our this? This is when we see that motion detected, right? We see that. So I'm gonna type in webhook because that is how we detect motion. We are gonna receive a web request. And the event name, and you can name this what you want, uh, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm asking you to name it motion underscore detected. And you'll see why in, when I reveal the code to you later on in this tutorial. But technically, yes, you can name it anything you want to, but it does need to match your code of the Python script that you will be running on your Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna click Create Trigger. Then I'm gonna click that. What do we want that to be? We want that to be our smart home device. And here you can choose from all sorts of different services here. Now I'm going to choose TP-Link and then TP-Link CASA will come up. This is assuming you're using a TP-Link. If you're not using a TP-Link plug, then I would select Smart uh, Life. I've got a bunch of Smart Life switches that I have configured on my account previously, on my channel previously. I'll link to that below if you have a Smart Life device. For example, this Tekken Smart Plug that I've featured on my channel previously is Tekken, but the app that you use is Smart Life. So you would select Smart Life in this scenario. If you are configuring this for the first time, you will need to know your login and password for that application 
on your phone. So for example, we set up a TP-Link, you had to create a login and password for TP-Link CASA. Uh, for the Tekken plug, you would have created a login and password into a Smart Life account on your phone. You will have to remember that login and password for this to work. So let's say, for example, if this is uh, G, G Home, you would have to hit connect and then you would type, and then in the next screen, you'd be prompted to type in your login and password for that specific app. And that's how you connect that account with your smart home device to your uh, to this motion sensor tp link casa i'm going to click on tp link casa and then you'll see your choices here you can always uh, turn on a device turn off a device toggle uh, which is the one i'm going to choose activate a scene uh, that means that you would have had to create a scene within your mobile app in the tp link casa app uh, and you want to play that scene. Um, you can change the brightness if you have a TP-Link smart bulb or change the color that would require a smart bulb as well or change the color temperature which is a smart bulb as well. So those are a couple choices that you have here. If you have a smart life device such as this Tekken plug your choices are turn on, turn off, activate scene, set light brightness, light color, uh, cool mode. Uh, so those are a couple different choices that you have here with this device. I'm, I'm selecting my CASA, my TP-Link CASA, and I am selecting turn on. So I wanna turn on my device and then uh, assuming you've logged in to your account, now you can choose from all of your different devices. Uh, here are my devices that I have on the TP-Link app. Uh, front door is one. This is a, a switch. I have featured switches, wall switches on my channel previously. Closets are also switches as well. So you could select anything that you have configured within that app actually. I'm going to select living room lamp because uh, this is my living room lamp and that's how I'm going to set it up. Create action and then uh, make sure this is correct and then I'm going to hit finish. All right. Awesome, okay, great. And so now I am ready to go with my motion detected living room lamp. Excellent, okay, so let's go back to my GitHub and let's look at the next set of instructions. I've made my applet from scratch with the web hook. I've cre created if this, then that. All right, excellent. So the next step is to go back into the IFTTT, go back to the home page. I'm gonna just open a new tab so you can see how this works. And then I'm going to type in webhook in, in, in the main search field there. Okay. Click webhooks, and then I'm gonna click on documentation, and it's gonna give me a key. And here under event, I could type in motion uh, detected uh, and to get a full URL. Okay, excellent. So now I'm going to uh, go back to my instructions, and let's get into the software installation here. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to open a terminal on my Raspberry Pi, and it says I need to do a sudo, sudo app get update. And this is just best practices. This actually isn't really part of the tutorial. And next is the sudo app get upgrade. Once again, best practices and not super duper important required for this project. All right, perfect. I've got everything upgraded and updated. I'm gonna make a directory called IFTTT. Great, I'm gonna CD into my Dean directory. And these are just all terminal, uh, basic terminal commands. You can see all of this in the file explorer, but it's easier for me to do it as a terminal command. And then I'm going to wget the code. And I've put this out on my S3 bucket here. And it is also part of the tutorial here. Let's get back to the terminal and I'm gonna do wget and and I am going to uh, add a new file into my directory. This is the Python code to run the script uh, to trigger the webhook. Full disclosure, I did not write the code myself. I found this on the PyHut. I will link to the PyHut. Uh, thank you very much, PyHut, for coming up with this code. And then you can sudo nano into the code right here. I'm gonna control X and get out of it. The more graphical way of doing that is to go into your file explorer and then uh, double click on IFTTT and then right click and then click on Genie and that opens up an editor where you can edit this file. So this is our this is the code that I copied from PyHut. Thank you very much. And what you need to do in this code is you need to find line 46 
and it says right here replace with your IFTTT key and if you noticed motion detected is the default on the sample code that you'll be downloading that's why I asked when you created your IFTTT applet that you use motion underscore detected now we'll go back to our web browser and we'll go back to IFTTT and here it is just copy and paste the key and then make sure it's within the quotes and then don't worry about the parameters I'm not doing that today while we're in here let's just take a quick look at the code what happens is we don't want this to be triggered on and off over and over again uh, so quickly right uh, the way that this code was written and I love it is that you will wait for two minutes after each trigger that way you're not triggering this constantly otherwise this thing will go crazy so it's basically saying all right you run the code it turns it on and then it waits 120 seconds two minutes before the next time you can trigger the motion sensor that's what this is now if you want to drop this down to 30 seconds be my guest and i have tried that it does it does actually work and actually in the demo uh, to speed things up in the demo i did uh, lower down the interval to 30 seconds okay and i'm going to hit save now we've got our python code ready to go and i can now run the code as is now how do i run the code the command is sudo python 3 ifttpir.py copy let's go back to our terminal and i will paste and hopefully the code will start working now that i've got the code running it says it's ready now i'm going to make a motion it sees the motion it says waiting 120 seconds and the light turns on now how do i turn it off I'll have to say echo turn off living room lamp unless you set it for toggle and which is available with the tp link casa if you, you'll also have to wait 120 seconds before you can turn it off as well there are some limitations so when i initially set this up that's what i would do i would test it out with the motion which won't work for another 120 seconds and then i would tell my echo to turn it off and that is how this project works so after 120 seconds the terminal will come back and i'll say it's ready again and then you can turn back on on your lamp uh, so you can see what the applications are for this um, you can do this with a switch or any basically any smart home device that you already have configured now what you're probably wondering is do I have to run the command sudo python 3 and the name of the file every single time to get this to work yes you do but I don't want to hook up a monitor every single time on my keyboard and everything to do that how do I do this on auto boot when I turn it on it should just start working without the keyboard and the mouse and the monitor and everything excellent question let's cover that right now I'm going to quit out of the application and I'm going back to my github page and I've got step 5 run on boot all right uh, so let's open up a terminal and I'm going to want to sudo nano dot b a s h r c file your bash file now this isn't a best practice some people say don't mess with your bash file because you could just screw up your entire computer this way worst case scenario let's say you made a mistake you would have to reflash start this project all over again i like doing it this way this i tried a couple different ways this way was the easiest and worked the best so it opens up your bash file that command so you'll arrow down and all the way down to the bottom now you'll want to add some commands so that you can start this on boot specifically you need to uh, add the command sudo python essentially you'll want to copy and paste the commands that i have in my github which is echo running at boot and then sudo python 3 and your command to run this file and i am going to control x to exit yes to save or the y key to save and then hit enter i want to restart this um, enter and then that should modify your bash file and then all I have to do is reboot we have rebooted our Raspberry Pi and it will take a few seconds for us to go through the bash script and start running our Python code and now let's try it out on boot and there it goes perfect echo turn off living room lamp 
And that was my tutorial on how to integrate a motion sensor with your Raspberry Pi, with a webhook on IFTTT with your smart home devices. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye now.